Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. I'm Justin with Excel Smith. Up to this point, my two most watched videos have been summing every nth row and using wildcards with the filter function. So I figured, hey, why not mash these two things together? On this episode of Solutions, we're building an equation to filter every nth row. Let's get started. We're starting with the same data set that we used in the sum every nth row video. However, instead of creating an equation to sum the monthly totals for each of the regions, we will be creating several equations to filter the data. The goal for the first equation is to show only the region total rows. To accomplish this, we'll build an equation using the filter function, which is available in Excel 365 and Excel 2021. For an introduction to the filter function, click the YouTube card or the link in the description. To get started, let's enter an equal sign in cell I8, followed by the word filter and an open parentheses. The first parameter of the filter function is the range of values we would like to filter. For this example, we'll select the range C8 through G32. The second parameter tells filter which values to show. This parameter must result in an array of trues and falses. We need to find a pattern that identifies only the region total rows. For our example, the pattern is that the region totals are six rows apart. Like in the summing every nth row video, we will build an equation using the mod and row functions to identify the appropriate rows to return. Let's start by entering mod and an open parentheses. Mod returns the remainder when dividing one number by another. The first parameter of mod is the numerator and the second parameter is the denominator. What we want is the remainder when dividing every row number in our data set by 6, which is the number of rows between the region totals. This means we need to enter a row function in the first parameter, passing in the range C8 through C32. Entering this range into row gives us the numbers 8 through 32 as the first parameter of the mod function. Let's close the parentheses to complete the row function. Next, we'll enter the number 6 as the second parameter of the mod function, followed by a closing parentheses. This mod equation creates an array of remainders when dividing the numbers 8 through 32 by the number 6. For example, when dividing 8 by 6, we get the remainder 2. Dividing 9 by 6 gives 3. 10 by 6 is 4, and so on. The complete array is a repeating pattern of the numbers 0 through 5. We now need to compare this mod equation to something so that this parameter of the filter function results in an array of trues and falses. We'll compare each of the values in that repeating pattern of 0 through 5 against the mod value of the first row we want returned, divided by 6. Let's type an equal sign followed by mod and an open parentheses. Like before, the first parameter of mod is a row function. However, instead of passing in a range, we will set the parameter equal to the first row of our desired output. In our example, that's cell C12. Like before, we'll close the parentheses and enter the number 6 as the second parameter of the mod function. Let's enter a closing parentheses to complete this mod function. This comparison works by taking each of the numbers in the mod function to the left of the equal sign, which is the pattern 0 through 5, and compares it against the mod equation on the right of the equal sign. In this example, the mod on the right of the equal sign evaluates to 0 since row C12, or 12, divided by 6 has a remainder of 0. This means that the second parameter of our filter equation will have a true for any row with a mod value equal to 0 in the range provided in the first mod equation. The trick to making this work is to set the second parameter of each mod equation to the distance between the desired rows. If each region had one more product lead, this value would have been 7 instead of 6. The second piece to be aware of is that the parameter in the row function to the right of the equal sign needs to be set to the cell containing the first value of the desired filtered set. For example, if we wanted to return the second name of each region instead of the region total, we would set this parameter equal to C9 since C9 is the first value in this desired filtered set. The last parameter of the filter function is what we want returned if there are no trues in the second parameter. This parameter is optional, but it's a good practice to enter something that is meaningful to your scenario. For our equation, we'll simply enter the words no value between quotes. Closing the parentheses and pressing enter, we get a filtered list showing only the region total rows. This equation could have been entered on a separate worksheet, which is probably the more common use. 
I included it on the same worksheet as our data set to make it easier to see what's happening. Like any filter equation, we can combine this every nth row approach with multiple criteria to modify our filtered list. For a more detailed look at filtering with multiple criteria, click the YouTube card or the link in the description. Our goal is to expand our filter equation so that it also shows the grand total row. This means we want an equation that returns every sixth row beginning with values in row 12 or any rows that begin with the value grand total. We'll start with the filtered list we built in the previous example. To add the second check, we first need to wrap the existing second parameter inside parentheses. Next, enter a plus sign. The plus sign allows us to enter an OR condition. This means that the second parameter of the filter function will be true if either the value on the left of the plus sign is true or if the value on the right of the plus sign is true. Like the portion on the left of the plus sign, we'll wrap this new segment in parentheses. Inside the parentheses, we'll enter the range we want the equation to review for the value grand total. For our data set, that's the range C8 through C32. We need to make sure this portion of the equation contains the same number of rows as the portion to the left of the plus sign. Next, we'll enter an equal sign followed by the words grand total in quotes. And that's it. This portion of the equation will scan the values in the range C8 through C32, returning true for any values equal to grand total and false for any other values. Let's press enter to see the results. If we were to evaluate the updated second parameter in the filter function, we would get a true wherever a value on the left of the plus sign equals true, or where the value on the right equals true. In other words, we get a true for each sixth row starting with the value in cell C12, as well as any cells in C8 through C32 that contain grand total. Let's build one more example with the filter function. For this example, our goal is to show all rows except the blank rows or the region total rows. We're starting with a filter equation that excludes all blanks. This is half of the solution. The next step is filtering out every sixth row beginning with row 12, the north region total. The first step, like in the previous example, is to wrap the current second parameter inside parentheses. To select all of the region total rows, we can use the second parameter from the equation in the first example. Let's press enter to submit our changes and head to that equation so that we can copy the second parameter. With that copied, let's head back to our work in progress. In the previous example, we added the grand total row to our equation by adding a plus sign. The plus sign returned true if our data was in every sixth row or if the product lead value was equal to grand total. However, in this example, we don't want an OR condition, we want an AND condition. In other words, we only want to show rows that are not blank and are not part of a region total. To accomplish this, we will use multiplication instead of addition. When using multiplication, both items on either side of the asterisk have to be true for the comparison to return true. After entering the asterisk, let's enter an opening and closing parentheses. We'll paste our copied equation segment between these parentheses. Pressing enter, we get the exact same results as our first example, that is, the region total rows. This is the opposite of what we want. Fortunately, we only need to make one small change to get our desired outcome. Let's go back into the formula bar and replace the equal sign between the two mod equations with a not equal sign, which is a less than sign followed by a greater than sign. Now our equation will return non-blank values as set by the portion to the left of the asterisk that are also not equal to every sixth row starting with the region total in row 12, which is defined in the portion to the right of the asterisk. Pressing enter, we get our desired outcome of all individuals within each region as well as the grand total. Our equation has filtered out the blanks and the region total data. Okay, I'm having too much fun. Let's build a bonus equation. However, for this one, we're not going to use the filter function. Instead, let's build an equation in column H that adds a true for every nth row and a false for the other rows. This would be a great solution if you want to filter your raw data instead of having a separate set of filtered data like in the previous examples. 
Like before, the key to this equation is comparing the mod values of each row with the mod value of the first row we'd like to show after filtering. To get started, we'll enter an equal sign, the function name mod, and an open parentheses. Again, we want an array of numbers that correspond to the rows of our data, so we'll type the function name row and an open parentheses. For this example, we'll ignore the grand total row and select the range C8 through C30. Let's close our parentheses to complete the row equation and enter a comma to move to the second parameter of our mod function. Like all of the equations in this video, our desired data is six rows apart, so we'll enter the number six and close the parentheses. We've completed the first half of our equation. Now we need to compare the mod values of each of the rows in the range C8 through C30 against the mod value of the first row we'd like returned. To do this, we'll enter an equal sign, the word mod, and an open parentheses. Let's change it up a bit for this one. Instead of returning the region totals, let's return the second name in each of the region groupings, that is rows 9, 15, 21, and 27. First, we need to pass in the row number corresponding to the name of the first row we'd like returned. Type the function name row and an open parentheses. Let's select cell C9 and close the parentheses. Again, we'll enter a comma and a 6 since we want the remainder of 9 when it's divided by 6, the distance between our desired values. That's it. Let's close the parentheses and press enter. Excel automatically spills the results of the equation across the range H8 through H30, which matches the rows passed into the first row function in our equation. All that's left is to select our filter dropdown in cell H6 and uncheck false and blanks. We are now left with just the true values which correspond to the second name in each of the region groupings. In this example, we applied a similar filter to what we used in the first example. The only difference is that we are filtering to show the second name of each region as opposed to the region total rows. This means that whatever we could use as the second parameter of a filter function could be used on its own to perform inline filtering like we did here. Our data structure maintains the grand total row. However, the values in this row are static and did not change after filtering the data. We could replace the static values with a subtotal function, but that would be a topic for another video. The solutions covered in this video could be useful as part of a dashboard or simply to clean up your data without deleting anything. If you found this video helpful, give those like and subscribe buttons a press. If you're craving another awesome Excel video, I've got one for you over there. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.